particular survey, they called it. It a lot of math to it. And I was never a math expert, but the, <clears throat> you 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 took a a rod and a, a uh, the thing the surveyors use. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, the, the, the instrument. The instrument you, they use, like the honing in. stick. Yes. <laughs> Looks like the wishbone. <laughs> and you tied in on the, on the rod. One guy would carry the rod. You'd carry the transom and uh, set up. And... Uh, it was designed to uh, uh, let the artillery zero in on on different points, and you were actually out in no man's land. So it was uh, pretty much a high risk assignment. So anyway, we did a lot of training, and uh, I finished eight weeks of that. Then we had two weeks leave. We were told we were going overseas. So we had two weeks leave, and uh, we were all given train tickets, in my case from Council Bluffs, to Camp Stillman, California. Oh, wow. Ended up in Camp Stillman, and uh, we were all called together, and they said to, the casualty rate in Korea right now is so high among field artillery surveyors. We have to have you over there right away so we can fly you over. Right away. So uh, that was the. Uh, How did you feel about that when they were telling you that, or you were hearing it through the guys, or what kind of stuff were you talking about? There were there were two hundred of us and pretty down in the dumps. Right, because there's always the cocky guys, and and then when you really find out what the right kill rate is, you're not cocky anymore. <laughs> right. And uh, fortunately I did get it. When I got there, I was able to get a three-day pass and I hitchhiked up to Woodward and spent a weekend with, with uh, my grandmother and uh, uh, Aunt Margaret, my cousin Horn and Dale. And, uh, My dad was there then, he'd remarried. Was he with Wilma at that time or somebody else? Uh, he met Wilma after he was set up to Reading on pg and &E, Oh, okay. Pacific Gas and Electric. And, uh, so you saw everybody there, right? I didn't see my dad, I didn't come to think of it. You didn't get to see your dad he before was you left? He was ready. Right. Okay. So you spent a week or two, you had a two-week pass? For four, when I went home to Council Bluff. Okay. This was, an over, this was a three-day oh, weekend, weekend pass. And we had seen my dad the year before. We had driven to California late spring of 1950 and drove my 1939 be so And I had a good trip with it. it. It had open drive, got good mileage. Anyway. Was that the same car you left behind for no, Mar Jean or was it a different one? No. Okay. I left behind for Mother and John my brand new 1950 specialty looks plumber that I bought in August of 1950. 1950 specially deluxe Plymouth. Right. 
Two door or four door? Do you remember? Two doors. Two doors. Nice. And uh, what color was that car? Dark green. Dark green. Anyway. Anyway, uh, go back to your three day pass. You were on the three day pass. Visited and uh, hitchhiked back to Camp Stoneman. Uh huh. And uh, I think that was on a Monday. And uh, Thanksgiving was that Thursday. So the day before uh, Thanksgiving, they loaded us on buses, all 200 of us, drove us to uh, Travis Air Force Base. And uh, we got there. I think we left real early in the morning because we got there it was Thanksgiving Day. Because we got to have Thanksgiving dinner, a big fancy dinner there at Travis. And uh, we ended up, we sat in the buses a long time. Finally, they had three DC-4s. I think they were the first of the Douglas craft that had four engines. Oh. They were labeled Flying Tigers. Okay. And Chenault had taken these Flying Tigers and was doing contract work for the government. So transporting was one of Transported. them. Transported, yeah. So after we had dinner, we were loaded on, on these DC-4s sat there most of the night, real early the next morning. We took off, flew to Honolulu, and uh, stopped the fuel, and they, uh, they took us in for dinner there at the airport in Honolulu. And so we took off then again uh, that evening. I've got to say, we flew fairly low, like 20,000 feet. You could look down. We flew over some of the most beautiful scenery I've ever seen. Most million islands that we flew over. And like rainforest, huh? Kind of like a rainforest it atmosphere. It was, but it was so much color. A lot of flowers and color. Yeah, and beautiful. Wow. Anyway, about halfway through the mid-morning, uh, we got to Midway. Stopped there to refuel, and they served us. They brought us breakfast in boxes. And took off again and flew into Tokyo, too. <clears throat> it was actually Tokyo's main airport but it was called Hanida Air Force Base. The Air Force had taken over the airport and uh, renamed it Hanida. Mm. And uh, we got there, they called us all together, all 200 of us. They said, half of you are being sent to Korea. If you have a secondary MOS, we're going to reassign you here in Japan. And any we don't need in Korea, I think they were taking the high scores and the training, field artillery training. Anyway, I was called aside, given a train ticket, from Tokyo to Yokosuka. Now Yokosuka is a big naval base and it's still, still a U.S. naval base. And uh, I'll always remember sitting in the Tokyo airport. They took me over in a, in a troop carrier, mm -hmm. dropped me off for the airport. I already had my ticket. I said, wait in there, uh, get your first train to Yokosuka. So uh, 
Yeah, in those days, uh, everything was in Japanese with English under it. Okay. And so, uh, see, the war ended in 1945, and uh, this was, this was, uh, 50, uh, So six years later, right. So, they were still transitioning six years later after World War II. <laughs> they really were. There was still a lot of damage. Sure. But anyway, I took the train down to, I remember sitting there in Tokyo Station. I thought to myself, well, the good Lord took care of you. I don't know what the future holds, but thank goodness I'm not going to Korea. <laughs> You really yeah, lucked out, absolutely. didn't you? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I probably wouldn't be here today. <laughs> Chances, yeah. statistics. Yeah, well, Don't there lie. Were, there were a number of, I heard secondhand later, and there were at least half a dozen casualties. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So while you were in Japan. Okay, well, let me get to you. I got to Yakuska. Yeah, you got to Yakuska. They had a sex file. Cam was covered waiting for us. A what? Six by the old, uh, you know, the six wheelers. Uh, oh, the okay. Old, old army truck with a. With, with the old covers on them, yeah, and they said yeah. just jump in the back and. So we crawled in the back, sat on benches on each side, and uh, uh, they said you're going to Camp McGill. And. Uh, Camp McGill was seven miles south of Yakuska on the coast. And it had been a Japanese uh, Air Force training base. They trained fighter pilots there, I found out later. Mm. The runway was our parade ground, right down the middle of the camp. Oh, wow. And uh, got to Fort Camp McGill. Dropped us off at the main building. Went in and uh, sent me to a first lieutenant behind the desk there. And he, he goes through my records. And uh, says, he says, you can type. Sounds to me like you belong in the quartermaster company. And so, so I sent, I had a guy there and he walked me over, it was just a couple blocks over, and took my duffel bag and walked over to the quartermaster company. Checked in there in the quarter in the quarterly room. And uh, first Sergeant Davis and uh, Corporal Hawkins was the company clerk. And uh, Captain Richmond was there, was company commander. So they sent me in to talk to him. So he has me close the door and he says, You're a typist, I understand. And I said, Yes, sir. He said, I've got a problem with my, uh, our company clerk is an alcoholic. Mm. Learn everything I'm going to ask you to work with him and learn all you can because I think before too long you'll be my company, company clerk. clerk. <laughs> so that's what I did. And Hawkins was a pretty good teacher. Uh, after a week, weekend came up, Hawkins got drunk and went AWOL. Oh boy. And all of a sudden I was company clerk. After a week. After a week. And uh, fortunately, uh, Sergeant Davis, he was already almost 60, uh, right in his own part. And, uh, um, but uh, it was interesting. 
the captain had been had an insurance business back in Texas. He had been taken because uh, he was uh, in the reserves and didn't mind letting anybody know that he was not happy. And the, he told me right out, he said, uh, I'm headed back to the States as soon as I can. A month later, he was gone. He was gone. And Captain McConaughey came in. Mm -hmm. Now, Captain McConaughey, I really liked him. Captain McConaughey had been a truck driver in East Texas before World War II. He was drafted in World War II, drove a truck through the all through the war, moved up, ended up getting these captain's quarters, and uh, he was going to be a career military. He liked it. He didn't like paperwork, so one of the first things when he got there, he called me and he said, Colonel, you're going to handle all the paperwork. You're going to do the training schedule. You're going to do it. So in fact, I'm going to get you cleared to top secret so you can handle everything in the safe. And he did. I got a lot of them. Well, Jack Olson, one of my buddies back at Council Bluffs, <coughs> Jack wrote me a letter. He said, what do you do? He says, the FBI was here checking up on you. They apparently interviewed uh, anybody I had listed as, as friends. Wow. They checked you out. Pretty well, pretty you were in wartime, though. Yeah. You were in wartime. I, I had top secret clearance that, but they, I don't think they checked anybody. Really? We, I mean, we really weren't in the war time at the time. I, I, I don't know, to be honest with you, but who knows? Well, I and, and, I, and I never lost my clinics. <laughs> Tells you something right there. Okay. Yeah. And I always had I didn't a, either. And yeah, I, I always know. had access to the safe even afterwards. So anyway. <clears throat> so well, how long you? were you in that position? At that at that duty station. Okay, this was the I did Thanksgiving coming over, so this was the latter this part of nineteen fifty one. Right. right. And uh, did you want a strawberry daiquiri? Mm -hmm. You're not. You can get carrot cake, or you can have this. Carrot cake. Mm -hmm. okay. He's drinking water. Anyway. Um. You didn't want one? Not I'm good. There's a real funny story written by Ted Schrager, who became my best buddy. He worked in the supply room. Right. And uh, he was a Lutheran minister's son. Ted was a... Uh, uh, a good friend that Jeff McConaughey called me in and he said uh, they need a Christmas tree in the in the day room. And he said, We have some funds. I'm gonna send you and Schrader out to buy the Christmas tree. It's really a funny story and it's in my biography. You can read it someday. But you'll you'll enjoy it. 